The Conservation Reserve Program, or CRP as many people call it, was uh, started in 1985 as a means to take marginal farmland, which was highly erodible actually, especially by wind, and put it into permanent grass cover. It's turned out to be a, a boon for wildlife habitat, generally, but there are some things we can do to improve it for quail habitat specifically. As you look around here, you'll notice it's uh, primarily a monoculture of a single species of grass. That's not necessarily good for quail. That's one of the challenges we have. Another is the shortage of shrubs. We have here a, an elm that's come up in this, this uh, CRP field, which is a welcome, a welcome thing. Brush sometimes, maybe often in, in livestock production is considered uh, something to be gotten rid of, but we want to see that coming in to CRP fields if we're thinking about quail management. They need these shrubs for loafing cover, for thermal protection, predator protection, and we also uh, need those uh, interspersed all through the CRP field, maybe at uh, ideally 50 foot spacing or so. That might be wishing for quite a bit with some of these fields like this one where there's so few shrubs, but we're glad to have what we do have here. This is an elm that's been half cut, limbs uh, have been halfway sawed through and broken down, bent down toward the ground to provide more on the ground kind of cover for for quail. As you know, an elm is typically an erect tree that has very little uh, foliage down near the ground. So this half cutting practice is a good way to enhance the benefit of this shrub in a CRP field. I mentioned the monoculture of grass. Well, what do you do about that? And besides that, you can notice how dense it is around here. Many CRP fields are, are, are covered in one species of grass, the real a decadent, we call it a decadent population of grass. It's been growing for a long time, ungrazed, probably hasn't been burned, uh, which is a tool that's, that's really beneficial to us. So you've got a lot of old uh, plant material at the base of the plant that's inhibiting any forbs from growing. It covers the ground like a solid cover of litter. So you think, what could you do with this challenge to increase it for the benefit for quail? You could mow it, you could shred it, but then that just adds to the litter on the ground, doesn't it? Uh, you, could, you could try to disc it or plow it. Again, you've got a, a huge problem with all this biomass. How are you gonna get it underground and start decaying? Probably you'll wanna think about things like burning, uh, maybe even mob grazing. In other words, intentionally bringing in a lot of cattle at once so that they won't be able to pick and choose what to eat. They'll go ahead and just pretty well shave it off. Uh, that's not a long-term practice. That's just a one-time treatment. After that, you would want to use light to moderate grazing. But those disturbances like fire and grazing are what we need to try to increase forb production in this dense cover of grass. So we're missing a, a more diverse grass species. That could en enhance it through those kinds of disturbances. We're missing enough shrubs. Uh, we can allow shrub encroachment where it, previously we might try to get rid of shrubs coming back in. And we can use half cutting, for example, with some species like elm that aren't particularly useful to quail. Uh, other species that may come in to, to CRP fields might be mesquite, could be juniper or cedar, uh, might be plum, but whatever you have in your area, be proud you have it. Wildlife shrub plantings are a, a good tool to consider when it comes to CRP that has a lack of shrubs. Uh, some CRP fields don't have a lot of shrubs coming back in them. Here on the High Plains, which is incidentally is where most of the CRP land is in the state of Texas, uh, we, we don't have a lot of shrubs that come back into these CRP fields. Sometimes people that are really interested in giving them a, giving a field a boost from a quail standpoint will plant Aromatic sumac has been found to do well. I'm standing by one of those here. Uh, plum, some of these species like that can be planted. The main thing to remember though is that you're gonna have to irrigate them. You're gonna have to take care of them for two or three years probably. Make sure you have a weed control mat on the ground, drip irrigation in place. It's not a, a uh, inexpensive proposition. And I, I, as you can look down the line here, you'll see some of these trees in spite of irrigation and and uh, good care over several years have died anyway. So we do have some survivors though, and that's a good thing. The, uh, just be sure and use good 
farming practices, don't just put them out here and wish them well because you won't have good results at all at that rate. It's sort of a drop in the bucket. You know, uh, looking across the landscape, you realize this is not going to contribute a whole lot, but it is something. And it's, some things, it's uh, something that some people do to, uh, as I said, give things a jump start, get things going a little quicker. The Texas Forest Service has a nursery in Lubbock that provides what they call wildlife packets of seedlings that can be used for this purpose. That's where these trees came from. Commercial suppliers have those just as well. So check out what would be the best deal for you. But there, there's no shortage of, of seedling tree uh, shrubs that can be used uh, for purposes of quail management, good, good uh, loafing cover plants, as well as food producing plants. Uh, check that out and, and think about this as an option if it fits your, your uh, objectives on, on your CRP. Weed control is important in establishing these shrub uh, plantings. We have a fabric on the ground here that, that got these seedlings up to the height you see now. You even see some little Illinois bundle flower here, which is a very good forb that's, that survived. But it, it would do some good to have less grass here mixed in with it so that it's not competing so much with these plants. You might accomplish that by fencing this out, as silly as that sounds, uh, and, and using some kind of weed control till these shrubs get up a little bigger. Or you could count on uh, some grazing, using grazing as a tool to knock this grass back a little bit. And um, uh, if, if, if those cattle don't particularly favor the shrubs you've planted, they won't be browsing them, they'll be eating the grass and, and the shrubs will be able to do better with the lower grass height. Plus the, the, the quail can stand to have a lessened density of, of grass here also. One alternative to adding shrubs to your CRP is uh, the construction of brush piles like you see here. It's, uh, it's not a, a primo living facility or loafing facility for quail, but it beats nothing as you can imagine. So in some cases, like the landowner has done here, he has some materials and some, some brush he can pile up here and make a, a brush pile, a, a artificial, so to speak, structure that can provide some loafing cover, maybe some thermal protection, protection from the cold as well as the heat. And um, as long as varmints don't take up residence there, it can be a, a, a decent substitute for a shrub. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not what you would want to aim for. It's something that, that you just may have to use because you don't have any alternatives. And it can be a good alternative in some situations like this where there's just really sparse natural shrub cover. Strip disking is a good practice. Uh, fall and winter disking alone can encourage forb production, which is a good thing for quail management. You get the seeds, you get the, the cover that's associated with them, and the diversity uh, just from the seed bank that's in the soil. Now the high plains is typically a short grass prairie, which is uh, blue grama and buffalo grass. Neither one of those grasses are particularly useful for quail. So uh, this opportunity to modify some of this uh, landscape as we manage CRP is a, a good opportunity to to improve habitat for quail uh, above actually what it was in its native state in a lot of this, this uh, short grass prairie country. This is an area where disking was, actually plowing was done on a small area to, to try the treatment and see how it would work. They plowed about two acres here and then planted a, a wildlife seed mix of, of perennial grasses, native grasses or, or grasses that were close to natives, close kin to natives. They used uh, uh, green sprangle top, they used uh, yellow Indian grass, they used big blue stem, grasses such as that. They also put in some, some uh, legumes such as Illinois bundle flower, forbs like purple prairie clover, alfalfa, and uh, those legumes are, are very beneficial for, for uh, building soil nitrogen as well as producing seeds for quail. And so we see here in this, this treatment trial uh, done about three years ago, a fair amount of success. We've opened up the, the ground where quail can travel better. Many of those grasses have survived. We definitely don't have a monoculture here on this treatment area. We have some, some uh, species of weeds and forbs that have come back that weren't planted. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It increases the diversity. As long as those plants don't squeeze out what we've planted, uh, we're, we're happy to have those too. Another thing you can do is just disc strips across the, the field, maybe every 50 feet or so, and uh, again, take advantage, uh, not just in a block like was done here, but in strips all the way across the field, maybe around the perimeter of the field. Again, take advantage of the native soil bank or plant uh, seeds. Here, we, 
the landowner planted sunflowers in uh, 50 foot strips and the sunflowers have done pretty well as you can see across the landscape. They've uh, certainly increased the, the diversity of the, the plant community and uh, overall I think if you can put aside the cost, which I think ended up being pretty expensive for this landowner, he saw really good results here. If, if the cost can be reduced down to the point where you're able to stand it or you can justify it with your hunting operation, operation this is a real good practice for converting this CRP land into more useful state for quail. Again, you still need shrubs though. A diversity of forbs, diversity of grasses is nice for nesting cover, for feeding, for brooding, for insect production. But without those shrubs, you don't have good quail habitat and you still need to, to address that in, uh, in some fashion. Take advantage of what's coming up in your field, if that is the case, or you may want to think about planting some shrubs in the high plains. Now for a different perspective, a whole different part of the state, Dr. Dale Rollins, the director of the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch, is going to give his perspective on quail management on CRP. Thanks, Ken. I'd like to tell our viewers now about the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch. Our CRP fields were put here in 1986, 87, so they're about 26 years old. They're out of the program now. We took them out in uh, last September, September of 2012 to provide greater flexibility on what we can do relative to quail. You got to keep in mind that the weak link on most CRP fields is woody cover. So as we look across this uh, CRP contract, we can see that the mesquites have been allowed to invade. We've come through here with a four wheeler and IPT brush treatment so we can take them out and basically sculpt those mesquites across the landscape like we'd like to see. We're still a little bit thin, but over time, we'll be increasing the usable space out here for Bob Whites. We were also curious to know how valuable are, is this CRP grass for nesting cover? It occupies about 13% of our landscape here at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch. Over the last four years, we've monitored 100 nests, 13 of them were in CRP, so they neither preferred it nor avoided it. But once the nest hatched, they didn't spend any more time in the CRP. Typically, they'd take their broods and go from here over to the rangeland and spend most of the time over there. So the lack of woody cover precluded its availability for good usable space for Bob Whites. We hope that changes over the next 10 years. Our grass that uh, comprises most of our CRP plantings is called Klein grass. It's an exotic grass from Africa. It's a panicum grass, uh, somewhat similar to switchgrass. It does produce a hard seed that quail would eat, but it's a very small seed, so food value is probably not its uh, greatest asset. But the fact that it uh, grows in a clump like this, at least in our part of the world here in Western Fisher County, it doesn't get too thick. It makes really good screening cover, nesting cover. So you can see that it'll, there'll be a bunch of grass here, but there's always a lot of bare ground. Quail do require some bare ground to find seeds and to escape. So it just provides a good growth structure. And if you've got to plant an exotic grass here in West Texas, if pine grass will grow and you have an interest in quail, it'd be one of the ones I recommend to you. You can contact your local NRCS office and they'll tell you where, whether climb grass is appropriate for your part of the state.